Yeah, just two more friends. Why don't we do the two friends first? Uh, we have two friends. Dick, give me one. The magnetic field. Symbol for a magnetic field. Book. Oh, B. B, capital or thing. Dimensions for uh, magnetic field. Sarah Jane Jones. A Tesla. A Tesla. What is a Tesla, Jenkins? Newton times amps per meter. Close. John? Newtons over amps times meters. You had all the right items in the wrong orders. Newtons Seven. per amp meter. Uh, equations. We have a couple of equations. One for a single charge. One for a current carrying wire. Uh, Stacy, give me one. Mu not n i. Mu not n i. Sure. We'll add that one. That's not one I was thinking of. Tell me about the n. And is it therefore uppercase or Lowercase, and that's equal to what? The magnetic field specifically for a solenoid. All right, I'm talking more about the definition, however, of the magnetic field. Winter? Magnetic field is the There's a reason this one is not initially readily available in your brain. What is the equation we're going to use here? Is it uh, IL cross B? Uh, sure, that's actually the second one, but that's fine. IL cross B, and what's that equal to? the magnetic force, which is why it's kind of odd, because it's the magnetic field that we're defining, but the magnetic field is defined by the fact that a charge moving in a magnetic field will feel a force. This is how the magnetic field is defined. Yes, Seth? Yes, go ahead. Which, of course, is where we should have started. QV cross B or QVB times Tyler? Uh, sine theta. Sine theta. Clearly, it would be ILB sine theta as well. Charge times velocity times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle between the velocity and the magnetic field. Yes, Mike? Um, For the FB one, is it L prime or L? Ah, so L is just the generic we use. It is L prime. We're talking about what type of a wire. Nitish. Straight one, like, right? When L is equal to L prime. When L is equal to L prime, yes. So, but generally, when we're talking about L prime, we're talking about what type of wire? Um, that, that's okay. You're missing my question, I think, Miller. A wire that isn't straight. A wire that isn't straight. So, when we talk about L prime, we're talking about a wire that isn't straight, some sort of curved wire, and it would be from the beginning to the end of the wire that's in the magnetic. In general, it's I L cross B. All right, we have our other friend, magnetic flux. Just introduced fairly in this section. We use to deal with it a lot more in the next chapters. Magnetic flux. Catherine, the symbol for magnetic flux. Um, is it a capital B? A capital B. with a lowercase of a capital B for magnetic flux as opposed to electric flux. Dimensions for magnetic flux. How do I do uh, say. <laughs> Wrong clock. What? Uh, who gave me the dimensions for magnetic flux? We haven't dealt with it much. Uh, Miller. Weber. Weber's. Oh, champ. <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten that one. <laughs> Weber. Let's start with the equation, then we'll figure out what a Weber is. What is the equation for magnetic flux? Uh, this is a 
I'm just going to put the integral down because in general just the, the integral of um, b dot da would be fine. Or we can have equal to b a times the cosine of theta. What then is a Weber, Travis? Um, a Tesla meter squared. A Tesla meter squared. Tesla times meter squared. All right. New stuff. We've already talked about QB cross B. Ah, let's do torque. Torque on a loop. We actually derived the equation for the torque on a loop. This is the torque, the torque on any shape loop around any axis of rotation flat. Vlad's looking on for it on his equation sheet. Will he find it, class? No. no. Who can help Vlad out? He's clearly not finding it, Potterell. I didn't hear the question. Ah, Vlad, what was the question? Uh, what is the torque on any loop? On any loop with any axis of rotation we directed in class. Zero? No. no. That would be actually the, uh, the flux on a closed, the magnetic flux on a closed loop, closed surface would be equal to zero. Uh, how's it? Um, I A cross B times number of loops. I A cross B usually with an N in the front where N is the number of loops. This is note not on your equation sheet, and this is something you should memorize. and be able to prove. We went through it in class. We have a charge moving perpendicular to a magnetic field. It is going to uh, move in what shape, Sarah Jane? Um, in magnetic field? Yep. Like in this circle? It's going to move in a circle. <clears throat> Therefore, we're going to have to sum the forces in the in direction. We'll have the magnetic forces equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration. We could use tangential velocity squared divided by the radius, or r times omega squared. We would then use often the angular velocity equals a change in theta over change in time, which is equal to 2 pi radians over the time for one full revolution, which is defined as the period. Bio Savart law. We have db equals mu naught i over 4 pi times ds cross r unit vector all over r squared. This is on the equation sheet. We used this to figure out the magnetic field at center of a circle or part of a circle. We also use it to figure out the magnetic field uh, on the axis of a circle. Let's see, what else? We also have, we figured out that we use it to figure out that the magnetic field on a long straight wire was equal to mu naught, or the magnetic field surrounding a long straight wire was equal to mu naught over 2 pi a where A was the distance to that particular point. However, I pointed out that this is not the, you really should not use bios of art to figure out this, the magnetic field from an infinitely long current carrying wire. What should you use instead to figure out the magnetic field at a certain distance from a current carrying wire? You should go ahead. Ampere's law, what is Ampere's law, Jenkins? Ampere's law. Um, it's a uh, closed circle. Or the yeah, the integral is a yeah. <laughs> closed loop integral. D dot ds is equal to. Uh, 
times the current inside the loop. Okay. How do we know, Jenkins, that we call this a closed loop integral as opposed to a closed surface integral? Because you need to draw an ampere. Ah, but how do we need to know? We need to know that. How do we know we need to draw an ampere loop? I agree that we need to draw an ampere loop, but what is it about this that says we're going to draw a loop and not a surface? Um, John? The ds. ds as opposed to um, Gauss's law, which was dot da. So this is a closed loop, whereas when we have dot da, it was a closed surface. So that helps you to understand that. And yes, we have to draw an ampere loop before we begin. So you use Ampere's law to solve for the magnetic field around an infinitely long current carrying wire. We now have two right-hand rules. Please walk me through one of the two right-hand rules. Um, Sierra. Well, there's one where you put your thumb in the direction of the current, and then you play your fingers in the direction of the magnet. Okay. We have one right-hand rule where we have the thumb goes with the current, and your fingers curl with the direction of the magnetic field. We have another right-hand rule. What is that one, please? Emily. It's for the QV cross V and your uh -huh. fingers go with V, and then you curl with V, and then... Paul, I'm sorry, you're saying things like you're too fast for me. The fingers, the fingers go... point with the velocity. I'm going to put the velocity or the current, right? And then they curl with V. Sorry, your V and V sound very similar. Curl with... V. V. Yep. Yeah. And then your thumb is pointing in the direction of the force for a positive charge, and if it's negative, then it's 180 degrees. Great. For a positive charge, and it's, if it's negative Q, then 180 degrees from the direction of your thumb. Great. So there's really only two right-hand rules. And there they are, right there. We have, we've already figured out the magnetic field for a solenoid. Please be aware that you are um, responsible for being able to derive the magnetic field for a solenoid. I do know it's on your equation sheet, but you do have to be able to derive it as well. We have um, magnetic flux. We also have um, Gauss's law for magnetic fields, which is the closed surface integral, because it's V dot dA for um, magnetic flux is always, in quotes, equal to zero. Why is the magnetic flux for a closed surface equal to zero, as far as we know? It doesn't have to do with the angle. It has to do with the way magnetic field lines are defined. They are always De Silva. Magnetic field lines are always not in pairs. True. So what are not in pairs? Well, like are always in pairs. They're always in loops. Sorry. Right. So the magnetic field is always in loops because, as far as we know, we've only found magnetic poles in pairs. We've never found a magnetic monopole. So because the magnetic loops are always zero, the number of field lines going into and out of any closed surface is always going to add up to zero. That is our review.